Back in early 2020, the Tested team and I flew to New Zealand to visit our friends at Weta Workshop as they embarked on their most ambitious project yet. A sprawling exhibition celebrating the creative genius and the deep problem solving that Weta Workshop and Richard Taylor have made world famous. That exhibition, now called Weta Workshop Unleashed, is open for public display in Auckland, New Zealand, and I cannot wait to see it in person. But until then, let's go back and visit me and the Tested team in early 2020. One of the things I've been noticing as we've been filming around here is that Make Believe will incorporate every level of expertise that Weta has developed over three and a half decades, one of them being animatronics. In fact, the very first thing you encounter will be an animatronic character. Except instead of having to operate for just a few weeks like on a feature film, this character has to sit there and operate in a museum atmosphere on the order of years. This is a fundamentally different engineering problem to solve, and we're gonna to talk to their engineers about how they're solving it. You guys have done so many animatronics at Weta over the years. Tell me what's unique about these animatronics. Uh, it's a different build to what we normally do. Okay, how come? Um, normally we build uh, the skull, and, uh, and then put all the servos attached to links within it. Mm -hmm. um, this build is a complete without the skull, um, and, but we will put a skull over the top. Right, right, right. But the fundamental is because normally we're building for film. Right. Really, we have built animatronics for long life uh, location-based experiences, and that, of course, changes everything, as you know, only too well. So this has to run for thousands of more hours than you normally cycle yeah, before. It has to be repairable. That's that's And to what Rod, Rod just said, unlike our film work, where we can sort of hang the servos willy-nilly inside uh, the shell, yeah. this, we want to be able to remove the shell and entirely have our animatronics um, condense within its own subframe. Right, right. Therefore, we can repair that <clears throat> and reclad it with the shell. So hopefully, if we do have breakdowns, we can service them very quickly. Well, and it looks, I mean, it, structurally, I'm used to seeing animatronics that look like this dense mishmash, and it's really hard to see what's going on. But this is very open frame. The shapes are quite simple. Is, all, is that partly of the philosophy to make it easy to repair and find a problem? Yeah, absolutely, and Rod has been designing it digitally, of course, as we can see on the screen over there. It, it actually all starts, of course, with the design of the sculpture. Jamie, Bess Warwick, and uh, C have done this beautiful sculpture. Mm -hmm. We've digitally scanned it. We have then supplied the skin thickness to uh, Rod, and he has therefore been able to extrapolate from that the cavity in which he can work. I then provide these very crude, very quick designs that um, tell him what my expectations Ooh. whoops of the um, of the movement are. Sorry, I and, didn't realize that I could actually yeah. move this around. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, no, it's fine. Oh, okay, sorry. And then he Continue. Start, no, then he starts building from those, and he knows the set of parameters that is expected of him. Yeah, so I start from the neck, and then just build up. Wow. The sensitivity is beautiful. Will the public be able to puppet this one? Uh, no. no. Not okay. in this case, but we are going to have components on tabletops that they will be able to puppeteer. And what I'm seeing here, this is going to be the lips, obviously. Yep. Um, and that will allow, I, tell me about this little, uh, this little uh, accordion thing here. There's just a placeholder at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but eventually the silicon will come over this. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a clear plastic skull over the top and then we'll cut out little uh, holes. Well, these are the brows. Right, um, right. And then we'll oh, cut I out see holes. the brows are still unconnected. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, so you'll have uh, servos up here for yep. that too. We developed a linkage arm uh, technique on The Hobbit when we are doing some of the animatronics for that, specifically for the scribe. And we ended up uh, developing this idea of these linkages. Uh, it's amazing to see uh, the level of work that's been done on the internet in this area and probably the uh, Navi uh, animatronic from the uh, the ride at Animal Kingdom, the mm -hmm. Disney ride is for Avatar is the most extraordinary in the world today. But we pulled these pictures because I bought a book uh, by one of the great animatronic uh, engineers and designers of the world, Garner Holt. Mm -hmm. That was the cover of the book right there. Yes. And I probably bought that book 25, maybe 30 years ago. 
and I've always aspired to see our company make something like this. Just and like here's that. Garner holding it. <laughs> and today on our desktop is Rod's uh, in, uh, first version of it and uh, the first one that we've ever built like this. So it's very exciting for us. So I know whenever you engineer something, there's always the problems that you solved and you knew they were solved. And then there's the problems that you kind of hope they're solved and you wonder how it's going to fail. In building something like this, do you have to just like keep on chasing those problems to make sure those won't fail? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, one thing we couldn't do in the software was uh, test the strength of these servos. Right. Um, and also the weight sure. upon them. Especially um, when you put the rubber on, that's a lot of yeah. torque on some of these. Yeah. So that's something we can only test now, now right. that we've got right. it assembled and uh, we've got it hooked up. So are you just sitting here like putting weights on it all day and kind of trying to get do. it to fail? We will do. We oh. only just got it going last night. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I, I'm go through always a lot of... the person that is pushing to up the um, the speed and strength of the servos. Yeah. Uh, these guys being very cost conscious are trying to find that very fine tipping point where the servos are going to give us the job. But you do have to build in a certain level of factor into it mm -hmm. uh, because of its um, the skin going on and the long life that's required. Um, what are these servos going to? It doesn't look like they're going uh, to They will yet. pull the lips back. Ah, OK. And then all these are operating things like the eyeball movement, the upper and lower eyelids. Then there's more. Oh, so the eyes there. will also look back and forth. Yeah, oh. the eyes will be fully articulating. You know, here is where. So I've given Rod my expectation. That, that little logo there <laughs> yeah. means full movement in the eye. That yeah. means upper and lower independent eyelid movement. Because yeah. so, if you don't independently control the upper and lower eye, you can't get the sense of maliciousness, ah. um, which requires this to rise, uh, independent to the upper lid, et cetera. Um, I, we've covered uh, some your uh, your amazing 3D printed eye mechanisms in the past. Is that what you will uh, modify to fit into Correct. this one? Yeah, we will use 3D printed uh, titanium eyelids uh, mounted around Tor's eyeballs, and then uh, put in traditional driver rods with ball lens. These wonderful. Uh, ball lens, which are immensely strong. Yeah, I'm sure you use these a lot yourself. Like all the time. Yeah, and uh, they will go back to the servos. Um, now, because you're sort of showing, because the whole purpose of this exhibit is to show people behind the curtain, how are you letting people understand both to enjoy the illusion and also see how the illusion is created? Less than a minute after they meet Jeff and Jeff welcomes them to the exhibition, they'll uh -huh. walk into our fictitious make-believe workshop and discover the art of animatronics. And sitting on a table, half assembled, is the components of Jeff. There'll be a video playing on the screen that shows Rod actually building the Jeff puppet, and there'll be components that they can play with. Wow, that's, that's really, I'm never not thrilled by animatronics when you get to see the mechanics up close. No, it's, it's a beautiful thing. In many ways, it's such a shame to hide them under a skin. And I've actually been talking to Rod about an idea I thought that when we meet Jeff, he might actually be, I originally intended him to have our, his back to the audience, but now I'm thinking that maybe he's asleep. He wakes up, he gives his delivery, and then he turns away from oh. the audience and the whole back of his head's missing. And we're looking into we'll the mechanism. That, that's a thought at the moment. That's like that magnificent shot from AI, where the oh, young woman, you see her face. One of the, oh, it's so beautiful. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, so what is the next what is the next challenge for you in, in completing this? Uh, we're going to have to put more servos on top. Right. So those are for the brows. Uh, we've got more links to put in, like for the eyes. Mm -hmm. Your eyes have got to go in. Um, the uh, the side mouth pedals have got to go in as well. I'm noticing um, that you've uh, that you seem these are custom machined little wheels with yep. an inbuilt cylinder here. For, it gives you extra torque and a little more uh, positive grab? Uh, it's actually so we can actually clear the screws on the bottom. Ah, yeah. of course, of course. Because we want to uh, mate to their mating uh, plate. I see. Uh, the, uh, the Dynamics all servos are beautiful because you can daisy chain them. Oh. Uh, you don't have to independently run each cable back to your um, to your system, you can actually daisy chain the servos. What a convenience. And, uh, and they are an immense uh, amount of torque in them. Uh, and so, still, you're probably going to be taking them to their limit. Well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> probably. Uh, 
Uh, you know, in reality, there's no real way that you can do this sort of stuff cost effectively, but because of our budgetary constraints, we're trying to stay within the hobby servo mm -hmm. zone as opposed to jumping right up to these costing potentially many thousands of dollars each, which yeah. we just can't do. So we are, we're probably on the edge a little bit. So this is interesting. What Rod does first and foremost is, as most people now do in the workshop, they prototype it utilizing 3D printed replicas right. of the servos. Ah, just for space? Yeah, for space design, because we can actually uh, print the servos on the little up printers so cheaply, right. uh, it gives us the ability to um, start to figure out the mechanical layout, then put it inside acrylic so that we can see the working mechanism. And that's, that's how we'll iterate on it for the first couple of weeks before we actually start the build. When all is said and done, how many servos will be in Jeff's head? Uh, there'll be 24. And is that kind of average for an animatronic head? Well, that's actually low. Uh, some, of the, some of the puppets that we've built have had, you know, in excess of 40, 45 servos just operating the face, uh, primarily the lips. If you think about the, um, the complexity of the lip movement, uh, yeah, you can see here. Ooh, ooh. So. <laughs> so it requires a lot of servos to try and uh, achieve the lip form. It looks like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck out of that, the amount of gesture you can yeah. get out of that. One of I mean, the most difficult things with lip articulation is the O form, O like this. Yeah. I, I was actually uh, had the good fortune of visiting the Henson workshop in Camden Town uh, and Neil Scanlon showed me around and uh, yeah. Even back then, they were doing early uh, O formation with the, that wonderful um, tubular plastic that if you put your fingers in, they lock up. Oh, yeah, like the finger cups, yeah. it's currally, whatever the word is, for around the bottom of Victorian dresses, but they make a synthetic version oh. now. They were actually trying that with little pull cables and getting these beautiful forms, but trying to actually get it into a... Uh, animatronic is tricky. Right, because the sides of your lips come out, oh, man. Yeah, they're pushing it out. Um, Rob, I'm curious if there's one aspect of the build that's still coming up that you're like nervous about. Uh, I guess at this stage it would be the strength of the motors yeah. and whether they're gonna hold the skin, um, especially these bottom ones here, because they've got about six kgs on top of them. Mm -hmm. Um, um, if they turn out not to be able, would you just double them up and add a secondary one? We could do uh, either that or we just buy a, a bigger motor, right. more torque. Yeah. The, a more sophisticated animatronic pipeline than what we have here, which there, there, there obviously are in the world, they will actually do full analysis on their servo choices, their rotary or linear actuators, uh, before they even build. Right. Because they have the software and they've they've created the internal uh, pipeline. Institutional knowledge. Yeah, yeah. A, a good example is the company Animax out of Nashville. Mm -hmm. They're extraordinary in the way they do full analysis on all of their motor drives. But but that's after twenty years of of um, in depth institutionalized knowledge and the the ability to fund that. So we're we're sort of. Um, suck it and see a little bit. We're, we're, <laughs> we're testing it as we go, which is a perfectly valid uh, process as yeah, well. And yeah. as long as we've, you can see we've allowed the cavity mm -hmm. to put in a significantly bigger motor, yeah. if required, uh, we will. That's, I mean, the amount you have to kind of be uh, prognosticating into the future, Yeah. right? Is, is, it, you're both in the present and you're in the future all at the same time. The beautiful thing about servos too is uh, if you swap it out, you've still got that servo. You just right. use it on another job. We're always going to use them for something. Yeah, yeah. They, so, never uh, they, they never go to waste. Rod, thank you so much for showing no me this beautiful thing. I had no idea I'd get to drive it. <laughs> oh, 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 look at that. <gasps> Oh, right. And then you've got a forward jaw and back jaw on this side. Forward, back. Oh, man. Yeah, our, oh. our jaws are not like trap doors, right? They sling, they float. So forward movement is actually critical for language. Wow. There's so much movement in this. 
I mean, even, I guess you kind of designed to have a little more movement than you might even have in the mask because you want to. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It, it will disappear as well behind the rubber. Right. You know, and like we, every actor's performance. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have to pay tribute uh, to the inspiration that we find on the internet today. People that open source and share uh, their ideas because it's all it iterative. Yeah. So highly inspiring stuff that people are sharing. Um, well, I am totally inspired. Rod, thank you so much, man. I thank appreciate you. it. Mm -hmm. Great sure. stuff, Adam. Amazing. Thank you.